is still Plus Politics, and we still have in the studio live with us the former Director General of NIMASA, Dr. Dakuku Adol Petersai. Now, before the break, we were talking about the um, uh, election, uh, of course, the Electoral Act uh, bill that is about to be signed into law. But let's move away from that and talk about the major problem that Nigeria has, which is insecurity. Um, we, Boko Haram has been around for so many years, and now we have banditry, the former headers crisis, we have unknown gunmen, and we have issues of kidnapping. Um, and we have seen even in the southeast where police um, officers have been targeted. By the unknown gunmen. <laughs> exactly. And we have also had ethnic tensions, um, you know, people agitating for the Yoruba nation, um, the secession in the southeast. I mean, it's, it's a potpourri of issue. The plate of the federal government is full. Uh, but my question is, how well do you think that the federal government has been able to manage this issue? Because especially for um, the issue of banditry and the kidnapping, it's become a business. It's like a free for all now. And we're seeing a lot more people being kidnapped. In, in the space of 24 hours yesterday, Kaduna State experienced two forms of abductions. How well do you think the federal government, especially under the uh, Buhari administration, has dealt with this? Well, thank you very much. First, let me condemn in very strong terms the rate and spate of insecurity in our nation. It has totally endangered the economy. It has stunted the growth of education. Um, it has totally destroyed means of livelihood in many parts of the country. Um, most of the Northeast, before now, depended on agriculture, you know, for survival. Many of them can't go to farm again, um, so their means of livelihood is gone. Um, even in the Middle Belt region, the headsmen, uh, farmers clashes. It's not done anyone any good at all. Um, down in the Southeast, um, not just ethnic tensions and, or agitations, uh, the rate of kidnapping has also put the economy in jeopardy of, the, of that region. So it's not good for anybody at all, you know. Then we've had kidnapping in the south-south part of the country and in virtually every part of the country. Yes, even in Lagos. Now, you know, when any nation faces this kind of challenge, it is for the entire country to rise up to the occasion. It's not just about federal government. It's not just about state government. It's not just about local government. I'm sorry. They are to provide we're direction. The, we're not the ones, the hmm? people. Yes, of course, we all have to rise to the occasion, but we're not the ones who took an oath to protect and serve the people. I'm coming to this that. This is the primary responsibility of any government at it any is. level. It is. But the buck does stop at Mr. President's table, doesn't it? it? It does. Now, Mr. President will walk through people, will walk through security agencies, commander in chief, he walked through security agencies, uh, military police. He also worked through intelligence agencies. And, you know, very often we neglect the fact that all of us are part of the intelligence network, not just the formal structure alone. What's going on is that the formal structure and the people seem to have literally failed us. I, so I'd I like to be very clear. It's not just the responsibility of government alone. Government should lead. But as individuals, we all have a role to play. Until Nigerians understand that all of us have a role to play in tackling insecurity in our country, we will not make much progress. Yes, of course, that is important. Uh, individuals in Nigeria have literally, gradually become their own government. And I, I'll tell you where I'm going. We provide our own water. We tie our own roads. We literally do everything for ourselves. Now, we even have, especially in Lagos, I'll use Lagos as an example, all estates are gated now, streets are gated, they get their own private security. What is the job of the government? Why are we paying taxes? And why didn't it's, 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 easy, it's easy for you to sit here and tell us that we all have to rise to the occasion. But what is the government doing to show us that leadership so that we can rise to the occasion? All right. I'm not spokesman for government. Well, you can, sound like I, one. I, I, no, not, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I've been rather critical of government. Have you? Oh, yeah. You need to read my columns every Monday. My position is very clear. Am I satisfied with government handling of the insecurity? Not quite. Things are getting better now. Things are improving marginally. 
Really? Oh, yes. With Imagine two abductions it. in no, one state. Marginally, I'm, I can tell you. Under 24 hours. I can't hours. tell the statistics that marginally. I'm, listen to me is this another? I said, is this another, is this another I said, no. technical defeat of Boko Haram? Like the no, I never said technical defeat well, of Boko Haram. Well, because you're saying marginally, but it sounds to me like you're saying technically things are getting better. No. In what way? My position is clear. Am I satisfied with government handling of the situation? My answer is capital no. In the past few weeks, has there been marginal improvement? Data points to the fact that there's been marginal improvement. Would you love to see a, a more proactive approach? The answer is a definite yes. It's in the affirmative. Are Nigerians happy with the state of insecurity? No, Nigerians are not happy. We're worried, we're concerned. So, what should government be doing that they have not done? Because mm. I'd like to make reference to a video that surfaced when um, INEC members went to visit Mr. President. Uh, I might not, I have to rephrase. He started by saying that what else do we want him to do that he has done his best? So, I put it to you. The best of Mr. President, yes, we asked that he change service chips. He has done that. We have asked that the IGP be changed. He has done that. But have we seen the action that matches those movements? No, we haven't. Why? So what this needs to, to be done for things to change? Now, I can say this to you. Now, security is a peculiar area. It will be unfair to expect that two months after the confirmation of an inspector general of police, things will change radically in the country. No. What we need to see, we want to see his plans. Nigeria should be agitating, Mr. Inspector General, we want to see your plans to tackle insecurity. Chief of Army Staff, we want to see your plans to tackle Boko Haram and all the insurgencies we're dealing with. Let them roll out the plans. That will give us some comfort. That will give us some hope. Not much is going to improve if they think that security is in the poor view of only the security agencies. But I'm telling you that Nigerians are the ones that are exposed. They need to know. There are things that they're, they're not asking for tactics. They're not asking for strategy. But you need to give them an idea of what you're doing, how you're thinking, how your mind is working about tackling insecurity. The issue of um, state police and uh, we know we have some para paramilitary outfits. We have some in the north. We have Ibubago in the southeast. We have... They're not paramilitary. Well, well, well they're paramilitary. somewhat. Somewhat, I they're said. They're paramilitary, yes. Yes. Um, and then uh, we used to have something of the, the same nature. I think neighborhood watch in River State. So we have those things. But why is it? Why is there such a pushback on state policing quickly? Well, now, um, is it the center that is pushing back the state police program? The answer is no. Now, are people in the National Assembly we expect them to feel the pulse of Nigerians. The National Assembly should be an aggregate of who we are. And if they are true representatives of the people, right now they should be able to pass that law establishing state police. I believe that is the right time, is the right thing to do. I totally support state police. It may be abused, but if we don't try, we never really know how it works and how it, how it works. I totally support state police. But you're not afraid that um, governors, because this is... Will abuse it? Will, that's might fear. use it as their personal that's bodyguard. A, that's the fear. In enacting a law establishing a state police, we should have a regulatory agency that regulates such excesses. How come state police is working in other places? In fact, they even have municipal police, both in the United Kingdom and in the United States. They are models. Nobody's asking anybody to go and reinvent the wheel. Study those models, look at the loopholes in the model, adapt them to fit our, suit our local circumstance. I mean, I'm, I'm and for as long as we have one central police underfunded, not well resourced, to please 200 million persons, this is the kind of result you, you keep getting. Quickly, let's go to River State because I've been told that we're out of time. Let's talk about the allegations that you leveled against the River State governor. Um, that also has been news. Uh, as at Sunday, I'd like to um, re-echo what the governor said. I think um, he was, um, on Sunday, he was uh, doing a, a commissioning, and he, I'd like to quote him directly, urged the Amayanabo of Okbobo Kingdom uh, to inquire from the Director General, uh, former Director General of NEMASA, that's you, 
and and a former commissioner for work. <laughs> uh, uh, to, to inquire from you, um, the contractor who abandoned the shore protection project in Queenstown after collecting two billion for the state for the state government. Now he also went to on to say that he was going to your place and you were not going to be able to do anything about it. Even though you had leveled some allegations about his projects, you said that building flyovers was not enough, uh, you know, to better the loss of the people. So um, I think I want to ask you that question. Who's the contractor? Okay, I'd like to respond this way. Typically, I don't join issues with persons who are uncultured, whose conduct are inconsistent with the office they occupy, they, who are uncooked, who uses abusive language in responding to issues. I typically will not join issues with them. Well, I don't but see, I like I don't see anything abusive in what I read out, so I'm asking again, who is the contractor? Okay, I'll, Can I'll, you I'll, I'll, I'll respond to that question. The question is very clear. As governor, as a state governor, you have access to unlimited information about your contractors. You know the name of the contractor. You have access to go to CAC to unveil the contractor. But when the government chooses deliberately to tell lies and make it his trademark, then it should be an issue of concern. I'll now take you to the issue of the contractor. It is a fact that a contract was awarded at the twilight of my tenure as commissioner for work sometime in 2010-2011 in University, 2009-2010. Now, it was not awarded for three billion. Two, he said. You no, know, he said three. He said three point something billion. It was awarded for less than two billion. The contractor was paid 30% mobilization. He has access as governor to those records. At the time I left office and moved on to National Assembly and I was elected to National Assembly, the contractor was on site. What happened thereafter, I do not know. But I inquired. Apparently, the contractor had issues with River State government. I do not know the contractor, save that the contractor passed through Drew process and got the job. I have no connection with the contractor, no link whatsoever to the contractor, and I challenge the governor. But as I challenge him, let me also put it to him that a con contract of course is on construction collected and ended this contract for 3.5 billion for Rumer Precon internal roads. That contractor, Ciscon, owns an asphalt plant at Rupoko, and the contractor is connected to the governor. The contractor collected 3.5 billion from NDDC, so, did not do any you, job, you, you, and at the end of it, as a governor, you still haven't River State government, who, what are what contract for who is the contractor? You know, some, the you have so answer. much information about this contractor. Why don't you tell us the name? Because there's a caveat. He said, and I quote, he will continue that project if you name the contractor. So let's drop it here. Of course he has the name of the contractor. No, you name the contractor. I don't know the contractor. Well, but you just gave us information about the contractor. Of so course. Name the contractor. Of course. And if you, I so you gave you a contract. You, you awarded a contract and you and do not know the name. Of contract. And you it do not know the name of the contractor. And you, and you do me. not know the name of the contractor. 15 years, the twilight 15 years of your, after. At the I twilight remember of all the names of contractors. But in River State, over that 200, contract, 200 contracts. Which has cost you so much headache, you still do not know the name of the contract? Of course, I can find out. Well, quickly, let's talk about your, your uh, leaving Namasa, finally. Um, some people said... No, but you know, there's something you didn't take note of. I said, look, River State governor needs to explain to us who is Ciscon Construction that was given any discussion for $3.5 billion for who may break on internal roads that was not done. And the money, the contract was paid 100% by NDDC for which EFCC has investigated but cannot prosecute the person because he has some level of immunity. The governor needs to explain that to reverse people. And he has used reverse money to do that same contract now. Uh, at this point, we will have to have Governor Wike on this show to give a response to this allegation. But well, I want to thank you because we're out of time. Uh, no, Adol, you are talking about the Massa. We can't because we're out of time. Dakuku Adol Pizzaside is a former DG the Massa, and he was a former commissioner in River State. Uh, thank you very much for being part of And to say that in my lifetime, I've not done any contract in reverse state government. I'm not challenging anybody. We have to go. Thank you very much for being part of the conversation. Thank you, too. All right, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, it's still Plus Politics.
Well, I hope you enjoyed the session today. We'll go on our Facebook page or on our Instagram and drop your comments. We would love to hear from you. Follow us on uh, Facebook, on Instagram, and on our YouTube, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle and Plus TV Africa. I am Mariana Kun, thanking you for being part of the conversation. Have a good evening.